we have to to set this up. Uh, so uh, China Mieville, people may be familiar with. He's a writer. Uh, he he's a novelist and uh, and and also uh, has also written you know several nonfiction books, including one a few years ago about the Communist Manifesto. A couple of years ago, uh, last year, I don't know. Time is a flat circle, but uh, at some point in the past, uh, he uh, he wrote a book called The Communist Manifesto, called The Specter Haunting. And uh, so we have a little clip of him being interviewed about it by his friend Ash Sarkar. But to kick us off, could you maybe tell us what communism is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how long do we have? I mean, one of the I mean, the book starts quite early on saying this is highly contested, you know, so it would be ridiculous to say, well, here's the definition. And now we all agree. But I think, you know, broadly speaking, in, highly contested, including among its advocates, obviously. But I suppose- No one fights like the left. <laughs> Yeah, well, quite. Um, but I think, I mean, at, at a very, very base level, I suppose, for me, what it is about is uh, grassroots democratic management of society and production um, that therefore, as part of that, prioritizes human need over profit. And if you want nothing else, that I suppose would be my kind of, my very baseline. Why is it that every time you talk about being a communist, I'm not just talking about you, I'm talking yeah. about the kind of you know, grander you, you're made to feel like a dog that has defecated on a prized family rug. Yeah. Well, you're very used to this being one of the one of the poster children for, for being a communist um, publicly. I mean, we can make jokes about it, but it is actually really depressing because I think, I mean, I, I would be tempted to say that there's two baseline answers. For years, one of the, one of the key answers was Stalinism and the, the situation of Stalinism. And that, I think, was a, a real issue and something mm. to be taken seriously. And, of course, the right wing always essentially acted as if the left wasn't engaging with this issue, which was bad faith bullshit. But it was nonetheless, when you have this enormous global power that is saying we are communists and that is doing things that most of us would not be supporting and that I think has nothing to do with democratic grassroots management of production and society, then it's not surprising to be generous that people are immediately anxious about the term. Now, what's interesting to me now is that in the decades since the collapse of, of official communism, if you like, um, among, uh, among a lot of people, and I do think this is not quite as bad as it used to be, but nonetheless, among a lot of people, one still has a, a lot of that kind of knee-jerk thing. And I don't quite know why it is. And I think part of it is, you know, I think it's a conglomeration of various things. I think it's the kind of effects of, you know, what Mark Fisher called capitalist realism mm. and this sense that, you know, even if that would be lovely, it's just prima facie ridiculous. Why are we even talking about it? And then on the kind of, as you go further right, it would be nice to think that people are so dismissive about it because it's a threat. Actually, I think a lot of people are dismissive about it because it's just, as I say, prima facie absurd. And one of the things that's depressing about that to me is the lack of intellectual curiosity, if nothing else. Mm. Like I would, I mean, people think that I'm saying this as a provocation. Totally sincerely, I would relish a good faith, serious debate with an interested right-wing interlocutor, a conservative who's like taking these ideas seriously, taking ideas to cure seriously. But I think it's a combination nowadays of many, many years of accreted political attacks mm. because we have we live in a right wing culture, which obviously has a kind of um has an instrumentalism for for the ruling elite, but also just a kind of complete degradation of kind of political culture where a lot of people who should know better are just not even interested in this in the abstract. Well, uh harsh words from uh from Mr. Mieville as he was coming out with his book uh 2021. I looked it up. Uh, on the Communist Manifesto, a uh, specter haunting. And, you know, he says some things there about what he means by communism. And, you know, I would say, you know, certainly there was a point historically when people used terms like socialism, communism, even social democrats. Remember, like the, the Bolshevik Party was the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, right? There were all these terms were used interchangeably at one point. And then since then, they've been used to mean different things. Uh, I like socialism because I think it's sort of the um you know in the sweet spot between indicating that i'm against uh that i'm against capitalist property relations but also you know also some of the associations don't immediately attach to it um 
But, you know, regardless, right? China Mieville in this clip, he's written a book about the Communist Manifesto. He, he wants serious engagement. He would welcome a debate with a, uh, with a right-winger who's willing to take these ideas seriously. And today we're going to look at some of those people uh, who have risen to the challenge and, uh, and they've, they've taken the Communist Manifesto seriously and, um, and they, have, uh, they have critiques of it uh, that they have been willing to post for the general public. So uh, we are going to read over the critiques. These are the one-star reviews of the Communist Manifesto on Amazon. And to highlight how reasonable they are, they've been curated by graphic artist extraordinaire J. Andrew World. So you know that these are probably some of the most sane, level-headed takes uh, offered on the internet, because that is what Andy would go out and gather, not the you know, not poisonous berries, um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, in the forest uh, or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, every uh, every every time that Andy has ever brought anything for us to look at in the post game, it's been very level headed. So uh, <laughs> I see no reason that the streak wouldn't continue. All right, let's one. see. One star communist manifesto one. Uh, who are the working men? Well, okay, Andy, is this is this a reasonable one or a less than reasonable one? Do you remember? Uh well, you get to the first sentence about the CIA director John Brennan. Okay, let's see. Yes, oh, sorry, Ben. Oh no, no, you go, you go for it. Be who are the who who are the Working Men's Alliance really? Certainly not the poor who went to Basel, Switzerland. By the way, this is by the atheist monk. The theological secular horror of our time. CIA director John Brennan voted communist. This should tell you something about the United States, but you will only understand the current chaos of the U.S. if you read the manifesto, then read it again, then reread the manifesto. Side note, much more than Jordan Peterson. Uh, that was my addition for podcast listeners. Annihilate all morality and all religion. Establish free trade, centralize all communication by the government, establish democracy, annihilate justice, liberty, and freedom, all to support the new Jer Jerusalem and monopoly of the world market. Eliminate nationality, family, and eliminate borders. Overturn and destroy the existing state of things. In the manifesto, the proletariat becomes more and more equalized, meaning reduced to nothing, powerless, silence, and the scripted struggle. This is the real meaning behind the lie of utopianism Marxists try to sell to people. No one person has more power than the other. You are all silenced and equalized. Think about that for two seconds and ponder the horror. Who has say in the communist Marxist system, only the bankers, not even a billionaire like Trump, cannot change the system in the U.S. So now you have some perspective your Marxist neoliberal professor did not give you. This seems like it was written by Jordan Peterson. Marxism is based on one totalitarian government. Communism is a theological creation sold in a secular package to ideologues who don't read or understand Marxist theology. Yeah, that all, that all sounds reasonable enough. Um, that's definitely, definitely that guy wasn't uh, muttering and cutting himself when he wrote that review. Uh, but uh, fun fact, the thing about jo John Brennan is actually true. Um, John Brennan actually did it, admitted to hearing once that as a college student in 1976, he voted for uh, uh, Gus Hall who was the uh, communist party candidate for president um, said that it, it came up on his like polygraph test when he first joined the CIA. But uh, apparently they were willing to forgive this as a useful indiscretion. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm fairly confident that he didn't do it again, but um, I, I also, you know, I'm pretty sure there, there are people who are communists today who like, voted for a Republican in 1976. Like, like it's, it's, it's very confused. Like I'm a little unclear about the relationship between these facts. It tells you all you need to know according to him. <laughs> yeah. Also he, I think he was just lifting out phrases from the communist manifesto and stringing them together. And he was including in, he was including some really interesting examples. Like actually, can we, can we see that again? Uh, okay. So a lot of this is like, yeah, establish free trade, right? Communists want to establish free trade. That's a communist thing. Um, it's confusing. Uh, I mean, I, I remember the communist manifesto thing about the, you know, bourgeoisie 
replacing all of the chartered rights and liberties with the single abominable liberty, you know, free to trade. Uh, but I, I, I literally, it makes me wonder if he was just like phrases would like embed themselves in his brain as he read them and he's just connected them all up here. And, uh, also there's, uh, God, what's the, uh, established democracy. That sounds good. Why, why is that bad? Why, why is establishing democracy? I mean, that one he actually marks is definitely saying in the communist manifesto that he's in favor of, but it's usually not the part that's emphasized by people who don't enjoy the book. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think this is kind of like a interesting word art collage of, uh, of <laughs> phrases. He that took like but... phrases and put them on like little index cards, posted them to the wall and connected yeah. together with red string. I was trying to, That's I was really trying to follow it. I was view. trying to follow it, but we have a bunch here. So should we, right, 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 let's, let's keep going. Some? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not relevant in today's world. Um, during the 1800s, when America was the manufacturing giant of the world, I could see how one of one could fill these words. But today, seeing how most manufacturing is done in communist countries like China, <laughs> you could clearly see Carl is wrong. Go to a communist country, visit a factory, and tell me how much better the workers' lives are. I'll be waiting for your response. I will say it's much better critique uh, than the than, than, than yeah. the last one. Yeah, the, 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 the intellectual level of these is definitely going in the right direction. <laughs> Certainly the clarity is. Uh, so that's good. Uh, yeah, it, it's also a lot of manufacturing is done in China, but like outside of China, like like even, even assuming that, you know, I mean, sh- look, there are communist countries, there are communist countries. I've... I've been to Cuba and like that felt to me like it was, I was actually in a different kind of society. Like it was like really, you know, like I spent a lot of time thinking about how weird it was. There was no advertising anywhere and how contrary that was to my entire experience of life on earth, Uh, you know, but uh, like really makes you realize how saturated we are in it the rest of the time. But I've also been in China and I'll tell you what, China feels exactly like just like being in any like Asian capitalist country. Like it's, uh, I mean, I remember the first day I was there, like taking a bunch of money out of the ATM and it's like, yeah, every bill has like Chairman Mao's face smiling up on me from it. But like literally where I was standing, there's like a giant Walmart superstore behind me. It's like, yeah, this doesn't feel different to me. Uh, and it's not like our uh, money has uh, our dear leaders on it. You know? uh, <laughs> that's also that, that's kind of a cheap point. I, I, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, but it's like yeah, we got Andrew Jackson still on our money. Like that's a good. Yeah. That's a, that's a less also, cheap point. That's a less yeah, point. yeah, definitely. But like, yeah, I mean, China. I mean, however exactly you want to classify it, certainly the state plays a bigger role in investment and uh, sort of high level economic planning that it does in normal capitalist countries, at least during peacetime, during wartime, you get a lot more of this stuff in Western countries. But, um, you know, however you want to classify it on a level of Marxist theory or whatever, like certainly China feels like going there just feels like a capitalist country that happens to have some residual communist iconography. We should, uh, we should, we should have uh, one of the China stands come and like do a debate. Some, or, or, or maybe I should just find a good debate because... None of that shit makes any sense to me. I'm far from a China expert. You know, I mean, the people who are like, sure. China's really holding the flag of, uh, of 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 socialism and Marxist vision just makes very little sense to me. But uh, maybe yeah, maybe I mean, more. most yeah, I mean, like there's, I mean, like there are tons of billionaires in China. There's there's tons of poor people in China. Uh, there's, you know, it's it's not obvious that it's like on the face of it, just by sort of normal intuitive standards, it doesn't seem obviously more socialisty than, uh, other than that iconography than, uh, you know, like even places like, you know, Taiwan, I mean, which is like, you know, it's like, yeah, there's like more, still more social democratic than the U S is. And it's like, certainly if what you mean by socialism is anything like Johnny Mayville's definition earlier, then like, you know, clearly not right but i mean like even in the sense that you might you know say that like china in the 70s was socialist like even in that sense it it seems like very not but like also even if you accept the terminology it's like well okay but outside of china what are all these communist countries that most manufacturing is in that part's confusing 
and also like um i don't know i mean like it like why is it important that your job is manufacturing that this would be like a relevant message like if you say mm. let's say you work in like a shipping warehouse you're not manufacturing anything but you know you're you're distributing uh goods that uh, that were manufactured elsewhere uh all of this stuff about capitalist class structures it's just totally irrelevant to your life it's work workerism or no mm. it's not not even that it's like whatever Haas does <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, they're, yeah. The only, they're the only workers that matter yeah yeah exactly uh which ripped, is, ripped guys ripped sweaty guys with hot <laughs> steaming bodies yeah 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 they uh, want to yell at uh doordash uh drivers well they're not yeah they don't they don't matter uh they're not they're not proletariat yeah yeah slash slash s for <laughs> yeah exactly okay let's keep it moving uh advertises utopia actually a hell on earth the book is a pipe dream a dystopian dream one that trades away the while not perfect present reality we currently have for a far worse system that guises itself under looking out for the common man meanwhile that same common man has no individuality no property he simply exists to serve the state it's gold blah 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 the book was bought so my kids could learn from it in hopes that my children are repeating what we today are repeating hmm, that's interesting those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it well i hope that this person's children accidentally become communists. i was i was just thinking i was trying to do the math and when this uh, review was left uh, and, uh, so I guess it was only three years ago, so probably not, but, uh, uh, but I, I, it would really make me happy if, uh, uh, it would really make me happy if, if the, if the, uh, it had the wrong effect and those kids are GTA patrons today, but, yeah. uh, yeah, 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 that, uh, yeah. Um, okay. So similar point though, I think just kind of, I mean, it's basically just, con you know, talking about what they see as the Soviet union, I think. Yeah, I mean it's 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 I mean it's it's really funny because it's so obviously unrelated to anything in the book, uh, and it's it's also you know it's like look this is just some like general thoughts on whatever this person thinks communism is. Yeah, uh, has absolutely nothing to do with anything Marx says in the Communist Manifesto, and also uh, while we're at it, let's see that one again. Sorry, I was like I was googling something. Um, here it is. Okay. Oh no, that's no. Still... Wait, was it? Was it? It was five. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, this book is a pipe dream, dystopian dream, uh, one that trades away the while not perfect present reality. <laughs> I, I really want to focus on the not perfect present reality. Uh, so, uh, Al Hollow. I really want to know when uh, when Al Hollow thinks this book was written. <laughs> It's like, look, Europe in the 1840s wasn't perfect, I suppose, right? You know, but it was it was pretty close. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that he's like, you know, telling his uh, his children to you know read this and and to see, uh, you know, what they should. And I imagine like his five year old reading uh, a part of the bourgeoisie is desirous of redressing social grievances in order to secure the continued existence of bourgeois society. And, it's, and being like, see, that is like, you don't want to be getting into that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying I, I'm to just find. Thinking it's it's like when uh, Rom on Star Trek Deep Space Nine discovered uh, the Communist Manifesto and tries to unionize <laughs> quarks. Um, it's just like that, you know. Hearing him read, you know, um, work, you know, let's just throw off our chains. Workers of the world unite. They're just like, yeah, oh, hell no, yeah, Rob's base. Yeah, that, I hope that's what the kids did. Um, <laughs> not uh i was trying to find the parts of the manifesto that i remember it just sounded like he was just kind of like subtweeting people like on on uh like isn't there a part where he's just like pissed off at his like at the i haven't read it in a few years but where he's just like annoyed at other factions and he's kind of just oh like, yeah 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 the uh the last the last part uh that you know he, he goes he goes through a bunch of that like it, it is actually kind of funny there are a couple of pages of the communist manifesto oh there it is position of the communists in relation to the various existing opposition parties i like imagining uh this guy from 
uh, just going through with his children, <laughs> like yeah. you know, Marx is just like petty denunciation of all these other the other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah really that, boring for the like, like, da Daddy, who are the true socialists? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, no, you have to know all of this. Like, um, chartists, agrarian reformers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Social, social Dems. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like, really get the the lay of the land for radical politics in the late 1840s to, you know, to be able to, to follow all of this, you know, and, and, and understand why it's so wrong. Yeah. Uh, there, there we go. Section four. All right. We can go to the next one. Um, meh. Thought this, thought this was a book of great idea and views, but ended up being a pamphlet for a pyramid scheme to take <laughs> the world has real pinky in the brain vibes. I, I do agree that there are some pinky in the brain vibes, but that's not derogatory from my, from my point of view. Pinky well, it's the, the use brain. of the word "narf," really. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's that's fair. Um, now I've got the song stuck in my head, but uh, I haven't I haven't thought about picking the brain in a long time. But there we there we have it. Yeah, I, I looked up the uh, the the uh, dictator song uh, before before the show, um, which was a pinky of the brain number. It's well. I thought you were about great. to sing it. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Karl Marx, one five stars. The zombie of Karl Marx showed up in my home, one out of five, and refused to leave and demanded for me to start a commune. Would not recommend. <laughs> all right, all right, it's more creative. I kind of like it. That's a. Yeah. I think it, that was a little. That was a libertarian, libertarian jokester. I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, give the guy credit for actually being creative. Jason Schroeder, disappointed. I bought the communist manifesto off Amazon. Nothing happened. No one even reported spinning sounds from Marx's grave. Disappointing. I I think you might have to know who the fuck Jason Schroeder is for this to, this joke to land. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who he is either. He's not yeah, the one I was uh, vigorously researching. Because oh, oh, because Marx. I think I think he was. I think he was making a joke about the fact it was bought on Amazon. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which, which is, is which is hilarious, definitely hilarious. Yeah, no, it's definitely like well, because there's all that stuff in the Communist Manifesto about how it's very important to not buy products from capitalist businesses. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kyle, Kyle Hellman, I read this to understand my enemy. Good quality paperback for he should have gotten <laughs> at least two stars for the for the quality of the paperback. Uh, nonsense ramblings of a delusional hypocrite. All people are exactly equal. Is literally the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. No two people are equal. To none is that in the Communist Manifesto? I, 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 no, no, it is not. Yeah, I, was reading. yeah. I, I actually all, like searched the, the phrase just to make sure you know I, I didn't miss something. All people yeah. are equal. Yeah, it's really weird that he puts that in quotation marks and like it, you know it's it's not even like oh the most ridiculous sentiment because then it's like oh well maybe this is just his like yeah. on what he got out of it. It's the most ridiculous statement. It's like well it's also not there i don't know what you're talking about man is the is the word equal even like I yeah know. i mean probably equal's probably. in there a lot but not uh yeah you know, well i, I i'm control I'm, I'm control effing i'm seeing equality i'm not really even seeing much equal uh but maybe i, mean, you, I don't know yeah oh no yeah. sorry i'm not in the i'm in i'm in a specific chapter but yeah continue yeah yeah i mean you also just get a lot of like um that's the various interests and conditions of life within the ranks of the proletariat are more and more equalized, right? So equal is there, but like, you know, that's, that's not uh, like, like Marx does not in fact talk about the, like equality as a value in, uh, in the communist manifesto, just, just cause that's not like, you know, I mean, I, I I'm all like, I mean, I talk about equality as a value way more than Marx did, you know, but like he, he had uh, like, he's, that just wasn't, you know, that just wasn't really his his thing. I mean, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know if people are equal, but the price of a commodity is equal to the cost of, of production, to the cost of its production, <laughs> to yeah. its cost of production. Uh, so those are two things he equates as being equal, not people. <laughs> That's a bit more of a dry point for some people, though. I think. Uh, um, all right, let's see. Uh, it costs money. Shouldn't this be free? Kind of takes <laughs> away from what Carl's is Carl's saying, doesn't it? That's what Michelle Woodworth. I'm not to dox. 
<laughs> they, uh, that's okay. Uh, I'm not. Uh, Michelle, uh, we're, we're not trying to stick anybody on you here. If you're watching this, Michelle, don't show up at Michelle's house. Th thank you for uh, pay, uh, paying us, uh, Michelle, for being a patron. Uh, we appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I hope you have now realized uh, <laughs> that, um, that, in fact, uh, I mean, not that, you know, Karl Marx having been dead this last century and a half is, uh, you know, or so is, uh, you know, and is no longer thus in a position to collect royalties. But uh, if you were, um, okay, uh, that's uh, what you know, by the way, is long since public domain. Anybody can publish this, but, uh, but like, even if we were, I, I, I must have missed the part of the communist manifesto about how writers should write for free. I don't think that's in there. Yeah, that way it was. It's pretty yeah. short. Read it a few times. I, I I really do not recall that. Yeah, um, everything should be free, no money. I mean, I guess in like a Star Trek post scarcity utopia, per, per chance. Uh... Sure. I mean, in like an extremely advanced socialist society where you know you were at that Star Trek stage, then sure everything would be free. But like you know, we obviously don't live in the society, and you know, in the society we live in, you need income to buy things. And yeah, uh, you know, I I think that uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, as as a as a socialist, I'm actually in favor of more people being paid more for their labor rather than less. That's, that's an interesting point. It's kind of the opposite. Now, Andy, this one's long, so. Uh, is this worth it, Andy? Uh, which one is this? It's the... Uh, oh, I remember, I remember this. this. Yeah, yeah, I sent this one to Ben. Okay, the <laughs> Communist Manifesto is an absolute twaddle. The Communist Manifesto is a must-read for everyone, if only to just demystify the whole thing. Anyone who has taken a course in logic... Oh, I should see. I'm, I should read this in more. Like, anyone who has taken a course in logic can easily, <laughs> can easily pick it to pieces. Marx and Engels' logic, if it even deserves that lofty description, goes like this. If A is true, then B is true. If B is true, then C must be true. If C is true, then Z must be true. It's inevitable. Okay, I just want to pause there to note that, once again, I'm seeing quotation marks. And granted, he says it goes like this, but it's like, I, I just, where does it go like that? Like, 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 what specifically in the book are you getting this from? Yeah, obviously Marx and Engels skipped a few steps, but this inevitability is a key component of their ideology, and it is a fallacy. Not only are their fundamental assumptions lacking sufficient universality to be determinative, each subsequent point in their argument becomes less convincing than the one preceding it until they abandon reason entirely and demand a leap of faith that their conclusions are inevitable to make matters worse. They were writing about the mercantilist system, which had, only, which had already been supplanted by the time the Communist Manifesto was written over 170 years ago. It was obsolete then, it's even more obsolete now. Capitalism or free enterprise, if you prefer, has proven far more resilient and adaptable to say nothing of more socially beneficial than communism ever dreamed of being. The simple fact that people still become enthralled by such a preposterous idea ideology or its watered-down version of socialism is a sad testament to the poor state of education pretty much everywhere around the world. Still, everyone should read it, if only to understand why the left are wrong and to be better prepared to confront them on their wrongness. Yeah, uh, this is um, this is also just a fun thing that like the most annoying ideologues across the spectrum all think that if like only there was proper education, then everybody <laughs> would agree with them, right? Yeah, like, it's like what what do you think education is? Well, um, I, I guess they they got the wrong lessons from uh uh oh what's that band um um. Uh, the, we don't need no education song from Pink, Pink Floyd. Floyd. Yeah, Pink Floyd. Yes. Why? Why, why do they? Why? What's? Why do they think that it was mercantilism and not capitalism that was going on in like the late eighteen hundreds? Yeah. And again, Marx is talking about you know replacement of all the you know innumerable chartered rights and liberties with the single abominable liberty of free trade. Um, pretty sure he's not talking about mercantilism there. I think that that's just. I think that somebody just like, I don't know, they saw something on the internet about, you know, mercantilism. So, you know, they were so like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they made that connection in their head, but yes, that is very, very clearly not what, uh, what, what Marx is talking about. 
in uh, in the manifesto, but uh, we are. Oh, what's up? Oh uh, no, I, I just I, I probably haven't thought about mercantilism since ninth grade social social studies. Uh, but it seems like it's about much having much more protectionist trade policies with like uh, in a in a in a, in a like it seems like more Trumpian than, uh, than, than, than yeah right like because you're you know about seeing different countries as being in competition you know sort of zero sum competition with each other and uh, and in particular trying to like accumulate masses of precious metals and it, again it just I, I don't I don't think that they're I think that they um, I think that they made a connection that's that's not really there but we are getting to uh, I think when we should probably wrap up pretty yeah, let's, soon. Okay. let's do 12 and then the last one okay. okay interesting I find it interesting that Amazon doesn't editorialize this book from Karl Marx Godfather of Communism the political system responsible for over 100 million deaths in the Soviet Union, Maoist China, Venezuela, Cuba, etc., yet provides a lengthy editorial on Mein Kampf. I would have I would have expected both of these books to receive the same treatment. Perhaps it's because our society is increasingly accepting of this type of thinking, and communism is the good kind of totalitarianism because it's all about equality. I, okay. I, this is the guy I did the research into because I wanted to see if he had a review for Mein Kampf on Amazon. <laughs> he does not. <laughs> I'm very sad to see that, but but I wanted to see what that was if if he did, because uh, because man, w w why is he so upset about Mein Kampf? Yeah, I, I will also note that he uh, misspelled Mein Kampf, but um, in any case, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, I I mean this is really amazing. So, so Marx was exactly like Hitler. Um, like this isn't a book by, I mean, as much as I think that, you know, the right side won World War II. So I don't actually, I wouldn't actually even view these as equivalent, but it's like, not like this is a book by Stalin, right? This is a book by Karl Marx. And um, so I don't know, let's say Hitler uh, ran a totalitarian dictatorship in Germany Uh conquered a bunch of other countries turned uh big parts of local population to slave labor uh initiated uh the mass extermination of european jews uh started um started a uh, a war in which many tens of millions of people died uh that's hitler marx wrote some books and he was like a newspaper editor that's marx um, they're the same you're saying yeah i mean it's, it's, in terms of their record of, you know of like impact on the world uh you know like you know the things they were doing in the world you say oh see but marx's ideas influence like well okay maybe let's think about this um i mean like john locke uh is a tremendous influence on you know the um on the united states uh, and and like acclaimed influence, um, and you know, so it's like John Locke responsible for the millions of people who died in Vietnam. Like it's you know, because because he wrote some books. Um, like like I really want to know what the standards are here. And it's like yeah, I mean Marx, you know, all this like oh Marx is just like Hitler because because uh, you know because communism is totalitarian and Marx is the Godfather. It's a really interesting word of, of communism. Um, it's like, okay, so Marx uh, not only never advocated any sort of like uh, one party state or censorship or anything like that. Um, the only head of state anywhere in the world that he, uh, he liked enough to even send him a friendly telegram was Abraham Lincoln, who was democratically elected and, you know, Marx supported for standard anti-slavery reasons. Um, you know, his, uh, his model he pointed to of what a post-revolutionary, you know, transitional society might look like was the Paris Commune, which was ultra democratic. And he praised it for those features that every official could be, you know, recalled by any, any time, by any reason, you know, for their constituents, all of this stuff. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I think maybe, uh, it's, uh, maybe it's not a great comparison. Like also Marx was against the death penalty, which I don't think Hitler was. All right, let's see. One last one. 
Margarita says communism makes communism makes everyone poor or dead. This this dude rollerblades and has a bidet for sure. <laughs> One person found this. It was helpful. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Now I got to upload that one. <laughs> now I want to know. Yeah. Now I want an interview with the. Uh, <laughs> you know, there was some anonymous person. It wasn't just Andy. I, I want to interview the person who uh, who found it helpful. Um. Yeah. I, I guess those are uh, code words for calling Marx gay. Uh, I will say. Okay. Uh, well, well, well. Well. Okay. So first of all, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really get the objection to bidets. Those that seems good, but um, also, um, I mean, Mark's rollerblading is funny, but also I've got to, I've got to, you know, uh, look. We can do the Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, but also, you know, if you do think there's something wrong with it, uh, you may think he's the godfather of communism that killed. 500 billion people in Venezuela or whatnot, but um, uh, man, it's definitely not gay. I mean, he had a bunch of kids. Uh, he famously, uh, he had a bunch of acknowledged children, is widely believed to have uh, have fathered an illegitimate child also, uh, who, uh, who, who Ingalls claimed to be the father of to, to sort of save the Marxist marriage. Uh, that's, uh, you know, whatever else you want to say about all that, I'm yeah, probably not gay. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with don't be foolish. <laughs>